living organisms and life processes. We have seen that various organ systems like digestive, respiratory, circulatory, excretory and control systems work continuously in the human body. These systems along with different external and internal organs perform their functions independently but through a complete coordination. Are these systems same in small animal like mice and big animal like elephant? Yes, all systems work more or less in similar way in these organisms, no matter whether they are small or big. For proper functioning, these systems need continuous supply of energy. Nutrients like carbohydrates and fats are the main sources of energy. Energy is harvested in the mitochondria present in each cell. For energy production along with nutrients, oxygen is also necessary. Exceptionally, some microorganisms do not need oxygen for energy production. The digested food and oxygen are transported to each cell by circulatory system. Therefore, we can say that each life process contributes in its own way in the process of energy production. Plants are autotrophs, which means they prepare their own food. They utilize some of the food for themselves and the remaining food is stored in various parts of the like fruits, leaves, stems, roots, etc. We and other animals consume these plant parts and obtain different nutrients like carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, minerals, etc. Which food materials do we consume to obtain these nutrients? We obtain carbohydrates from milk, fruits, jaggery, cane sugar, honey, vegetables, potatoes, sweet potatoes, sweet meat and cereals like wheat, maize, ragi, joar, millet, rice, etc. To obtain fats and lipids, we consume oil, ghee, butter, etc. To obtain proteins, we consume pulses, milk, meat, eggs, etc. And we obtain vitamins and minerals mainly from vegetables and fruits. Good to know. Each gram of carbohydrate gives us 4 kilocalorie energy. While watching a match on TV, we generally see players consuming some foodstuffs during breaks. What they consume and why? Due to physical exertion during a match, the body of the players lose a lot of water and salts in the form of sweat. Due to this, they feel tired and need instant energy. For this, they consume energy drink which contains water, salt and glucose which boost their energy. We have learned that for energy production, nutrients and oxygen are necessary. But how they together produce energy? To find the answer, let us move to the next part of the chapter. Living Organisms and Energy Production All living organisms perform respiration. But do you know what exactly happens during respiration? Come, let us do a detailed study of this life process. In living organisms, respiration occurs at two levels, body level and cellular level. We know that at body level, oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged between body and surrounding. When diaphragm contracts and moves downwards, air is taken into the body through the nostrils. This air enters the nasal cavity and then through the larynx moves into the trachea. The air further passes into the two bronchi in each lung 
and further into the bronchioles. Alveoli are present at the end of the bronchioles. Air from the bronchioles enter the alveoli. Oxygen present in the air is taken up by blood present in the alveolar blood vessels and carbon dioxide is released in the alveoli which is thrown out from the body when we exhale air. When oxygen is taken inside the body, it is utilized to oxidize glucose molecules into carbon dioxide and water and energy is released. Each glucose molecule that is oxidized during this process is made up of 6 carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms and 6 oxygen atoms. All these atoms are joined together with covalent bonds. Come. After this brief description about cellular respiration, let us now proceed to learn about its mechanism. Cellular respiration. Carbohydrates of the food that we consume every day are mainly utilized for the production of energy required for our daily need. This energy is obtained in the form of ATP. For this purpose, glucose, a type of carbohydrate, is oxidized step by step in the cells. This is called cellular respiration. Cellular respiration occurs among the living organisms by two methods. Aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Come, let us learn about each method one by one. Aerobic respiration. In aerobic respiration, glucose is oxidized in three steps. Glycolysis, Krebs cycle and electron transfer chain reaction. Glycolysis. The process of glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm of a cell. A molecule of glucose is oxidized step by step in total 10 steps in this process. After glycolysis, one molecule of glucose utilizing two molecules of ATP and NAD gives two molecules of pyruvic acid, two molecules of NADH2, two molecules of water and four molecules of ATP. By using two molecules of coenzyme A and two molecules of NAD, the pyruvic acid molecules formed during glycolysis is converted into two molecules of acetyl coenzyme A, two molecules of carbon dioxide and two molecules of NADH2. ATP ATP or adenosine triphosphate contains a nitrogenous compound adenine, a pentose sugar ribose and three phosphate groups. It is an energy-rich molecule and energy is stored in the bonds by which phosphate groups are attached to each other. These ATP molecules are stored in the cell. Whenever cell needs energy, one phosphate bond breaks and energy is released. In this process, ATP gets converted into ADP or adenosine diphosphate. Hence, ATP is called as energy currency of the cell. Always remember, NAD or NADH2, that is, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, is a coenzyme. Coenzymes are small molecules which cannot function alone but can be reused several times when paired with an enzyme. These are made in the cells and help in cellular respiration. Some other coenzymes are FAD or FADH2, that is, flavin adenine dinucleotide, FMN, that is, flavin mononucleotide, and NADP, that is, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate, vitamin riboflavin, that is B2, and vitamin nicotinamide, that is B3, are necessary for the production of FADH2 and NADH2 coenzymes. Come, 
Let us proceed to learn about the second step in cellular respiration, that is, the Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle Krebs cycle is also called tricarboxylic acid cycle. Both molecules of acetyl coenzyme A formed in the glycolysis in the cytoplasm of cell now enter in the mitochondria. Acetyl part of acetyl coenzyme A is completely oxidized in this cyclical process and carbon dioxide, water, NADH2, FADH2 are formed and energy is released. Remember, acetyl coenzyme A oxidized in the Krebs cycle are derived from pyruvic acid which are derived from glucose. Thus, it means that the oxidation of acetyl coenzyme A is nothing but the oxidation of glucose. Introduction to Scientists The process of glycolysis was discovered by three scientists Gustav Emden, Otto Meerhoff and Jacob Pernus along with their colleagues. For this purpose they performed experiments on muscles. Hence glycolysis is also called as emden meerhoff pernus pathway or EMP pathway. The cyclical reactions of tricarboxylic acid cycle were discovered by Sir Hans Krebs. Hence, this cyclical process is also called as Krebs cycle. For this discovery, he was awarded Nobel Prize in 1953. Come, let us now learn about the third step involved in aerobic respiration. Electron transfer chain reaction. Molecules of NADH2 and FADH2 formed during glycolysis and Krebs cycle now participate in electron transfer chain reaction. In this reaction, each NADH2 molecule produce three ATP molecules and each FADH2 molecule produce two ATP molecules. Besides ATP, water molecules are also produced. Electron transfer chain reaction is operated in mitochondria only. Thus, in aerobic respiration, when a glucose molecule is completely oxidized, carbon dioxide and water are produced along with energy. If there is insufficient amount of carbohydrates in body due to exceptional conditions like fasting or hunger, then the body uses lipids and proteins for energy production. Lipids are converted into fatty acids, whereas proteins are converted into amino acids. Fatty acids and amino acids both are then converted into acetyl coenzyme A and energy is obtained through complete oxidation of acetyl coenzyme A by the process of Krebs cycle in mitochondria. If we eat more carbohydrates than required by the body, then excess glucose is stored in liver and muscles in the form of glycogen. When the body needs energy, this stored glycogen is again converted into glucose and utilized. After learning about aerobic respiration, let us now learn about anaerobic respiration in which oxygen is not used. Anaerobic respiration Some living organisms can survive without oxygen. For example, anaerobic bacteria. Such living organisms have to follow anaerobic respiration for energy production. Glycolysis and fermentation are two steps of anaerobic respiration. We have seen that during glycolysis, glucose molecule is incompletely oxidized and pyruvic acid is produced with less amount of energy. Pyruvic acid is then converted into other products with the help of some enzymes and this process is called fermentation. Yeast, a type of fungus, carries out fermentation in pyruvic acid and converts it into alcohol. Similarly, various microbes after fermentation convert pyruvic acid into different products such as vinegar, 
vitamins, etc. Red blood cell or erythrocyte does not have mitochondria. Therefore, RBC entirely depend on anaerobic respiration for energy production and lactic acid is produced by fermentation. Similarly, lactobacilli, a bacteria present in milk after fermentation, turn pyruvic acid into lactic acid. Some higher plants, animals and aerobic microorganisms sometimes also perform anaerobic respiration instead of aerobic respiration if there is depletion in oxygen level in the surrounding. For example, our muscle cells perform anaerobic respiration when oxygen is temporarily depleted while performing physical exercise. Due to this, less amount of energy is produced in our body and thus formed lactic acid accumulates in muscles due to which we feel tired. When oxygen levels return to normal, muscle cells again return to aerobic respiration. Germinating seeds also perform anaerobic respiration if the soil is submerged under water. From this, we can conclude that aerobic respiration is the cellular respiration which involves complete oxidation of glucose and mitochondria is the cell organelle necessary for the complete oxidation of glucose. After learning about the energy production from carbohydrates, let us now learn about the energy production from other nutrients. Energy from different food components. Proteins. Proteins are the macromolecules formed by bonding together many amino acids. Proteins of animal origin, that is, meat, fish, chicken, eggs, etc., are called as first class proteins. Each gram of protein gives us 4 kilocalorie energy. Amino acids are obtained from the digestion of proteins. These amino acids are absorbed in the body and transported up to each organ and cell via blood. From these amino acids, organs and cells synthesize various proteins necessary for themselves and for the whole body. For example, amino acids are used by skin to make melanin, the pigment and keratin, the key structural material of hair, horns, etc. By bones to make osin, the collagen component of bone. By cells to make various proteins of cell membrane and in the synthesis of various enzymes. By pancreas in the synthesis of insulin and trypsin enzyme. By pituitary gland in the synthesis of various hormones. By muscle cells in the synthesis of actin and myosin which are flexible proteins and in blood to synthesize hemoglobin and antibodies. Always keep in mind, amino acids obtained from excess of proteins consumed are not stored in the body. They are decomposed and the ammonia formed is eliminated out of the body. If necessary, excess of proteins are converted into other useful substances like glucose through the process of Gluconeogenesis Plants produce the necessary amino acids from minerals and thereby produce different types of proteins. An enzyme Rubisco present in the plant's chloroplast is the most abundant protein found in nature. Lipids The substance formed by specific chemical bond between fatty acids and alcohol are called lipids. When we eat foodstuffs rich in lipids, after digestion, they are converted into fatty acids and alcohol. Fatty acids, after absorption, are distributed everywhere within the body. From these fatty acids, different cells produce various substances necessary for themselves. For example, phospholipids essential for the synthesis of plasma membrane are formed from absorbed fatty acids. Fatty acids are also used in the synthesis of hormones like progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, aldosterone, etc. 
and in the synthesis of covering around the exons of nerve cells. Each gram of lipid gives us 9 kilocalorie energy. Excess of lipids are stored in adipose connective tissue in the body. Vitamins Vitamins are a group of heterogeneous compounds essential for the proper functioning of various processes in the body. There are six main types of vitamins A, B, C, D, E and K. Out of these, A, D, E and K are fat soluble while vitamin B and C are water soluble. Deficiency of vitamin causes many diseases. Let us discuss some common diseases caused due to deficiency of vitamins. Many times, you cannot eat spicy food due to inflammation or ulceration in mouth. What causes mouth ulcer? One of the main reasons of occurrence of mouth ulcer is the deficiency of vitamin B12. In night blindness, person experiences difficulty in night vision. It generally occurs in childhood or in between childhood and adolescence. It is caused due to the deficiency of vitamin A. Rickets is a disorder in which skeletal deformities are observed. It is caused due to deficiency of vitamin D. Beriberi is a nerve disorder in which muscles become weak and numbness in hands and feet are observed. It is caused due to the deficiency of vitamin B1. Neuritis is inflammation of nerve. The symptoms include pain, a pins and needles sensation, numbness and weakness. It is caused due to the deficiency of vitamin B12. Pellagra is a disease characterized by diarrhea, dermatitis and dementia. It occurs as a result of vitamin B3 deficiency. People with anemia report feelings of weakness and their skin looks pale. It is caused due to the deficiency of vitamin B12. The symptoms of scurvy are bleeding gums, weakness, fatigue and rashes. Scurvy is caused due to the deficiency of vitamin C. To avoid occurrence of such diseases and to be healthy, we must include the food sources in our daily diet which can provide us with enough quantity of vitamins. Let us find out how much quantity of each vitamin is needed by our body every day for its smooth functioning. Remember, these are only average values. Actual requirement may differ depending upon the person's age, sex and other factors. Water there is about 65 to 70 percent water in our body. Each cell contains about 70 percent water weight by weight. Blood plasma also contains 90 percent of water. Functioning of cells and thereby the whole body gets disturbed even if there is a little loss of water from the body. That is why we experience dryness in mouth whenever we are thirsty. Hence, Water is also an essential nutrient. If someone in your family is experiencing loose motions, what will you suggest? In loose motions, there is a considerable loss of water and electrolytes. Therefore, to replenish water and electrolyte, we should give them oral rehydration solution, that is, ORS, in sufficient quantity, which contains salt, sugar, and water. We sweat more, especially in summer season and whenever we are involved in physical labor because the body temperature rises. To lower down body temperature, sweat glands secrete sweat which on evaporation lower down the body temperature. This leads to water loss in the body. Therefore, to meet our body's requirement, we should always drink sufficient water. Come, let us now move on to study about one more component of food, that is, 
fibers fibers we have seen the importance of nutrients like carbohydrates proteins lipids vitamins and water but do you know that fibers are also essential nutrients fibers are also carbohydrates but like other carbohydrates our body cannot digest fibers they are very helpful in the digestion of other substances and help in the ejection of undigested food therefore we should always include leafy vegetables fruits cereals etc in our daily diet as they are the good source of fibers let us now proceed to the next part of the chapter cell division you might have noticed that whenever you get injured while playing the wound gets healed after a few days how when we are injured the cells of that place get damaged soon after the body starts the healing process in which the intact cells present around the wound start dividing and fill the wound with newly formed cells similarly when we pluck flowers from the plants they also get injured and the wounds are healed by the cell division in the surrounding cells cell division is one of the very important characteristics of cells and living organisms multicellular organisms grow and increase in size due to cell division which increase the number of cells in them emaciated body can be restored by cell division new individuals of a species are formed from existing ones of the same species by the process of reproduction in which cell division plays a vital role cell division is of two types mitosis and meiosis mitosis occurs in somatic cells and stem cells of the body whereas meiosis occurs in germ cells only we have studied earlier about the structural organization of a cell we know that each cell has a nucleus and many cell organelles present in the cytoplasm before any type of cell division the cell prepares itself and in this process doubles up its chromosome number present in its nucleus that is if the number of chromosomes is 2n then it is doubled up to 4n we have studied about chromosomes in the previous standard chromosomes are made up of dna and appear dumbbell shaped midway during cell division do you remember the name of its various parts come let us label each part of chromosome we all know that each chromosome is made up of dna the constricted region on each chromosome is called primary constriction or centromere and each part of chromosome is called arm p arm and q arm come let us now find out how exactly chromosomes take part in cell division mitosis somatic cells and stem cells divide by mitosis the mother cell which undergoes cell division is 2n that is diploid which means the chromosomes present in the nucleus are in pairs before cell division chromosomes are duplicated and their numbers are doubled up to 4n the whole process of mitosis is completed through two main steps karyokinesis that is nuclear division and cytokinesis that is cytoplasmic division the division of nucleus that is karyokinesis is completed through four steps prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase let us learn about them one by one prophase in prophase condensation of thin thread like chromosomes starts due to this they become short and thick and they start to appear along with their pairs of sister chromatids centrioles duplicate 
and each centriole moves towards the opposite poles of the cell. Simultaneously, nuclear membrane and nucleolus start to disappear. Metaphase Nuclear membrane completely disappears before the beginning of metaphase. Chromosomes complete their condensation and become clearly visible along with sister chromatids. In metaphase, all chromosomes start arranging themselves parallel to equatorial plane, that is, central plane of the cell. Special type of flexible protein fibers, also called spindle fibers, are formed between centromere of each chromosome and both centrioles. Anaphase In anaphase, centromere split and thereby sister chromatids of each chromosome separate and are pulled apart in opposite directions with the help of spindle fibers. These separated sister chromatids are called daughter chromosomes. When each set of chromosomes reach at two opposite poles of the cell, they appear like a bunch of bananas. Telophase the chromosomes which have reached the opposite poles of the cell now start to decondense. Due to this, each of the chromosomes again become like a fine, delicate thread and start disappearing. Very soon they are invisible. Nuclear membrane reappears around each set of chromosomes at both poles. Finally, two daughter nuclei are formed in a cell. Nucleolus also reappears in each daughter nuclei. Spindle fibers completely disappear. By the end of telophase, karyokinesis is complete, resulting in the formation of two nucleus with same number of chromosomes. Now the second step of mitosis, that is, cytokinesis, begins. Cytokinesis In cytokinesis, a notch is formed at the equatorial plane of the cell which deepens gradually towards the center and finally two new cells are formed. These newly formed cells are called daughter cells. However, in case of plant cells, instead of a notch, a cell plate is formed exactly at the midline of the cell which grows towards the periphery and thus cytokinesis is completed. After a detailed study about mitosis, can you tell why this process is considered to be so vital? Hmm. Mitosis is essential for the growth of the body. Besides, it is also necessary for the restoration of emaciated body, wound healing, formation of blood cells, etc. Come, let us now proceed to learn about another type of cell division, that is, Meiosis 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 occurs only in germ cells. The process of gamete production and spore formation occurs by meiosis. After meiosis, one diploid cell gives four haploid cells. Meiosis is completed through two stages. Meiosis 1 Meiosis 2 Meiosis 1 This process completes in several steps. During this cell division, crossing over occurs between the homologous chromosomes present in the 2N that is diploid mother cell. Homologous chromosomes are chromosomal pairs that are similar in length, gene pair and centromere location. Crossing over results in genetic recombination. Thereafter, these chromosomes divide into two groups and finally two haploid daughter cells are formed, each with n number of chromosomes, which means each cell possesses only one copy of a chromosomal pair. Meiosis 2 Meiosis 2 is just like mitosis. In this stage, the two haploid daughter cells formed in meiosis 1 undergo division 
and finally, four haploid daughter cells are formed. Since there was genetic recombination in meiosis 1, all the four daughter cells formed are genetically different from mother cell and from each other. These cells now transform into gametes which are always haploid, that is, have n number of chromosomes. During fertilization, male haploid gamete joins with female haploid gamete and a diploid zygote is formed which divides and grows into a new diploid living organism. Therefore, formation of haploid gametes help the living organism to maintain the number of chromosomes in its species. After learning about cell division, let us do an interesting activity to observe different steps of mitosis in onion plant. Activity Take a medium-sized onion and keep it in a glass jar filled with water in such a way that the roots of onion remain dipped in the water. New roots develop within 4 to 5 days. Cut the tips of these roots and put them in a Petri dish. Add few drops of iodine solution. Take one root tip on a glass slide and press it with the help of forceps. Add one to two drops of water on it and cover it with a cover slip. Observe the prepared slide under the compound microscope. Which step of mitosis do you see? We see metaphase step in the cell of the root tip. How did you identify the step? As all the chromosomes are arranged parallel to the equatorial plane of the cell, we can say that the cell observed is in metaphase step. Sketch the figure in your notebook.